So occasionally I come across a uh, antenna on uh, eBay that uh, piques my interest not just because of the uh, description but just because of uh, what it is and the way it looks. Now this uh, believe it or not is a omnidirectional antenna and it's based on a uh, dipole antenna, a Hertzian dipole antenna for 5.8 gigahertz FPV. Now the funny face that you can see on there with uh, the sunglasses on and what looks like a tie here, that's uh, the main driven element of the antenna. The uh, lapels on the shirt here or jacket are the ground plane of the antenna. If I flip it over there's uh, no driven element on the back but again we've got a ground plane just here. So everything else is just artwork basically but uh, believe it or not it is a uh, Hertzian dipole antenna and it is omnidirectional. Now the thing that really piqued my interest with this uh, antenna, we can't see it there in the description because it's cut off slightly, but uh, if we have a look down at the bottom here, apparently it's uh, got a low standing wave, so it's an ultra low standing wave. And uh, that, I uh, was a little bit confused at that statement. I've never heard of uh, that statement used in uh, something like this before. And uh, I did a quick Google search and all the first page was taken up with uh, adverts for selling this antenna, uh, particularly on uh, places like Banggood and eBay. But uh, as I scrolled down further, I think it was on the third page of uh, Google search, I did come across a paper where they talked about uh, ultra low standing wave when it comes to uh, a feed point, uh, the uh, transmission line going into a uh, patch antenna and uh, basically how in some designs you can get a small standing wave going on in that uh, feed line which uh, again messes up the antenna but uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, it's got nothing to do with this antenna here and uh, all it is is uh, some seller adding that in making it sound better than what it is or a little bit of technical data that's made up as you normally see with uh, these cheap antennas from uh, China where they just exaggerate things or completely make things up. So I think we can dismiss the uh, statement ultra low standing wave unless again they're thinking of uh, you know the VSWR being ultra low I don't know but uh, it is an omnidirectional antenna and uh, that was the aspect I wanted to get it in and uh, give it a test to show you but uh, we've got a uh, short pigtail here, here that we can uh, use to connect the antenna to make it a little bit longer if you need to. So uh, what I'm going to do is take this over to the spectrum analyzer and see how well it performs. And for those of you who are still doubting that this is a uh, dipole antenna, basically this shape of the head here reminded me of an antenna that we've looked at previously on this channel for the uh, 2.4 gigahertz. Now I can't find the antenna, I have still got it somewhere. It was a Cisco antenna and it was designed to be uh, fixed on the uh, ceiling pointing downwards. And uh, this is uh, an etching that I made uh, directly using the uh, pattern on that antenna in the, the video I showed you how to make this. And uh, this antenna had this uh, main driven element here shaped a little bit like a uh, spear or something like that. You know, it's a, it's a very strange shape. And uh, what that shape did, it uh, increased the bandwidth of the antenna. And because this antenna was uh, designed for a professional uh, wireless uh, installation uh, you know in an office environment or a uh, warehouse something like that it was designed to hang uh, from the ceiling and because uh, it was on the ceiling it didn't really want any uh, of the uh, you know the RF the uh, Wi-Fi uh, goodness going off into the ceiling where it's of no use to anyone so uh, the pattern on this was designed to send it down and uh, around here a little bit like a uh, down lighter does with a uh, light bulb so it was more usable in that area so if this is uh, I can't remember exactly how much it was now but uh, let's say this was uh, 6 dB you weren't wasting uh, 2, B, 2 dB of that uh, gain going up into the ceiling where nobody could use it so basically this shape was designed to manipulate the radiation pattern of this so it all went downwards where it could be used and uh, I did think uh, that possibly something similar was going on with this or possibly they've just 
etched uh, what looks like a nice shape into this to make that a selling feature whether it works or not is a uh, secondary concern to uh, the seller so here's the setup exactly how I uh, normally test an antenna like this on the bench with the spectrum analyzer but here's the output on the spectrum analyzer so here is the output on the spectrum analyzer then I've got a span of uh, 200 uh, megahertz centered on uh, 5.845 gigahertz there and you can see that uh, there's nothing here that resembles a frequency response for an antenna at uh, 5.8 gigahertz I mean we've got a little bit of a response over here and uh, another one down here right at the beginning of the uh, span there but uh, really there's nothing going on here at all you know it's um, if you were to stick this on and expect to get any kind of range out of this you'll be uh, you know severely uh, disappointed to say the least and uh, you could probably end up damaging your equipment as well with uh, this uh, kind of uh, reflections that you're getting in this area here you're getting a lot of power reflected back to your equipment so your equipment would get uh, hotter and uh, you'd be in danger of breaking your equipment so let's have a look at the uh, measurements for this now this is a uh, hertzian dipole so it would start off with the uh, antenna I mean this is just the driven element we'll forget about the ground plane for now but uh, this first length here will be 9.6 millimeters long in order you know to work at uh, 5.8 gigahertz then we would have a loading coil and then you would have the driven element continuing again and then this would be 25.86 and this would be uh, at a uh, full wavelength but because of the loading coil it reduces the overall length but basically uh, you've got a quarter wavelength here and then uh, normally a uh, full wavelength here I mean sometimes you see them with uh, a three quarter wavelength or a half wavelength but uh, generally these are the measurements that you would need to produce a Hertzian dipole to work at uh, 5.8 gigahertz. Now you've got to remember as well that when I'm talking about a Hertzian dipole it's completely different from uh, this kind of dipole here. Now I was only on a uh, couple of forums a few days ago uh, when I was looking uh, around at uh, dipole measurements for 5.8 gigahertz and people were uh, putting uh, pages into the thread and confusing the thread and they were talking about this kind of dipole and mixing it up with a uh, Hertzian dipole because somebody was asking the question of uh, you know the measurements uh, for one of these short dipoles he'd basically taken a uh, small dipole uh, to pieces and measured it for uh, 5.8 gigahertz and uh, the uh, measurements as far as he was concerned were all wrong and people were posting uh, references to this kind of dipole which does have its uses but we don't use it very often this tends to be used uh, for something like a, uh, uh, a Yagi antenna this dipole by the way is for uh, 2.4 gigahertz and you need also need really to have a balloon with one of these to make it work correctly but we don't tend to use these so much because the radiation pattern it gives off is a little bit different it's uh, more like that kind of radiation pattern instead of the more traditional uh, donut shape that uh, you get from this with a null at the top and a null at the bottom but uh, a nice 360 degree uh, radiation pattern so now that we know what the measurements should be uh, round about in the ballpark let's uh, take a look at the measurements of this uh, little uh, panel antenna here and I'm kind of guessing that this knot in his tie is uh, supposed to be some kind of uh, loading coil although I've never seen a loading coil uh, etched in that way before you would always find it etched something like that uh, they do change a little bit but they all tend to be uh, of that kind of similar design so let's just take uh, it that uh, this knot in its tie is the loading coil and take the measurements from there so if we take the knot in his tie here to be uh, the loading coil and we measure up to the knot in his tie then this first section here does seem to be around uh, 9.6 millimeters I'll just try and get that on camera this black solder mask does make it a little bit difficult but it does seem to be in that kind of range there now if we take it from the top of the knot in his tie here and measure to the top of his head hub here then uh, that should be uh, around 25.86 millimeters and it does look 
a little bit a little bit long you know it is a little bit longer it's more like uh, 30 millimeters or uh, around about 28 millimeters there but uh, even if uh, it was spot on this is uh, not working as a loading call so i just don't really understand the measurements here whether they just kind of uh, guessed it and winged it and uh, you know just come for a nice image on this uh, uh, etched out uh, piece of pcb here I uh, don't know but as you saw on the spectrum analyzer if you were to use this quite often you would uh, put a lot of heat stresses on your uh, transmitting and receiving equipment you know it could ultimately over time uh, break that equipment and uh, shorten its life uh, significantly to uh, what it would be if you used a proper antenna matched in this and the output on the spectrum analyzer is more like something you'd see if I'd hooked up a uh, 2.4 gigahertz antenna and uh, tested it at uh, that frequency range you know it, it would just be flat you wouldn't really see any kind of response in any kind of area so i'd have to say that this antenna is not really an antenna at all and again these uh, shoulders here that he's got on his suit would be the ground plane so you would expect those to uh, be around a quarter wavelength as well at uh, 9.6 millimeters but uh, they're just not you know they're uh, significantly longer if i measure them across as well it's uh, it's just not made for uh, 5.8 gigahertz unless somebody has been using the mathematics for uh, one of these more traditional dipoles trying to etch it out onto a board like this and getting confused with a uh, hertzian dipole and I also checked with the spectrum analyzer whether this uh, pigtail may, may be uh, at fault. And I did hook it up directly onto the SMA connector here on this end. But it made uh, no real difference at all. And uh, the seller that uh, sold me this doesn't sell any anymore. He stopped selling them. And he has got, I mean, I haven't left any feedback for this. But uh, he has got uh, five uh, negative feedbacks over the last uh, six weeks or so all related to these antennas and he's removed them from sale now and uh, I think they were even for sale once on Amazon but they're no longer available you can only pick these up on uh, places like Banggood and places like that so I think this goes down into the Hall of Fame of being the uh, worst antenna I've had in so far for testing uh, you know you can't really call this an antenna at all I would stay well clear of one of these uh, wouldn't buy one as I say there's not many places you can buy them from now but uh, if you do have one of these and you are using it uh, for one thing you're not going to get very much range out of this at all you'll be uh, a little bit disappointed with this you're better off with the uh, little rubber ducky dipole antenna and uh, you know if you are using this I would uh, stop using it you know as soon as possible your equipment will uh, you know thank you for it so I hope you found uh, this one interesting. Uh, I didn't know how bad it was until I uh, actually tested it. I just bought it for that statement of the uh, ultra low standing wave uh, in the uh, technical specs for this. And of course it did look a little bit uh, funky. I mean, uh, it's a pretty nice idea to actually turn the antenna into uh, some kind of art there, but uh, no, stay well clear of this. So if you've got any comments or questions, drop them below and I'll uh, do my best to answer them. And if you did enjoy the video, then please give it a thumbs up and hopefully you'll join me on the next one.